Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I will finally be reviewing and demonstrating the new Dior Golden Knights Holiday Collection. So today we will unbox, we will swatch, do some comparison swatching, and I'm gonna show you two different eye looks, one using each palette. Before we dive right in, because I don't wanna make you wait any longer, if it's your first time here, welcome. I'm so happy you found me. This is our pink sparkly bubble on YouTube where we talk about luxury, beauty, fragrance, fashion, everything glam. So if that sounds good to you, join us by subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell. First, let me begin by showing you what I picked up. So here I have both of the eyeshadow palettes, 089 Black Knight and 549 Golden Snow. I also picked up both of the cheeks. So here I have the Rouge Blush in 310 Golden Frisson and 353 Rose Frisson. It's the blush and the highlighting powder. The only other thing that I plan to purchase that I don't have here yet is the really pretty sparkly nail polish. I am going to get that. I decided to skip on the eyeliners. The gold looks really pretty. The black is really nice. The shimmer is very subtle. So if you already own a lot of black eyeliners, you could probably skip it. I don't think you'd be able to detect it on the eye. I skipped out on all of the lipsticks because I have three of the Diorific lipsticks from last year and I don't think the shades are all that new and exciting this time around or else I probably would have picked them up, but I haven't really touched these that much since last year. It's not my favorite formula. I love the packaging. This gold packaging, I look forward to this every year. It's a staple for Dior holiday. It's beautiful. I love taking this with me to holiday parties. You know, it's the type of lipstick that you throw in a clutch. Take it with you for a date night out. It's just so pretty. I like it. I don't love it because even though they look really sparkly, it's actually pretty matte on the lips. It feels matte. It looks matte. I'm just not a huge fan of mattes. So let me start the unboxing. I'm going to begin with the palette 089 Black Knight. This is the very deep, dark, vampy eyeshadow palette, which you can tell by looking at the colors inside. This is a smoky eye palette. I was sort of on the fence about this collection because I couldn't figure out which palette I should get. Should I pick up both? Should I pick up none? Because I just can't envision myself using this palette a lot. Now that I own both, I think I'm gonna have to start creating smoky eyes on the weekends just to walk around the kitchen, take the dog out or get the mail. I do really like the shades in this palette. They're very pretty. It's a particular look. This is not a versatile palette. It's kind of a one trick pony. And if you're looking for something that creates really dramatic smoky eyes, this will be perfect. And I don't think anybody's looking at this palette and trying to convince themselves that they will wear it on a daily basis. A couple things I really appreciate. I don't own anything like this, so I didn't feel like I was duplicating anything in my collection whenever I picked this up makes me feel better about the purchase. And you know exactly what kind of look you're gonna do. When you pull this out, it is because you are doing a smoky eye. You're not going to play around with it and see what comes to you. No, you know when you pull out this palette, it's going to be dramatic, smoky. Something I would recommend, and it's what I do with all of my new eyeshadow palettes, play around with it for a good week. Come up with at least two to three different looks that you can just keep in your back pocket for a rainy day. That way, if you ever pull this palette out, you know exactly what you're gonna do with it because this is not a user-friendly palette. Next, I'm going to unbox the 549 Golden Snow Eyeshadow Palette. It's the only other palette in the collection. I think I forgot to mention, but I was sort of surprised that neither palette came with a velvet protector. The blushes did, the eyeshadow quince did not. I don't know if that was the case in the past, but it kind of surprised me. You can tell right away just by looking at this eyeshadow palette that the colors are a lot more neutral. They're earth tones. This is going to be very wearable. My only criticism of this eyeshadow palette is that it might look like a lot of other eyeshadow palettes that you already have in your collection. Just playing devil's advocate here. I don't want anybody to waste their money because it is very pretty. It's easy to get sucked into this palette and then you get home and you realize, oh, I already have six very similar palettes. I don't think I have six, but I definitely have one in mind. One in particular, it's palette 342 Lumiere A Opulence. This is from the Chanel Holiday Collection last year. And when I hold them up next to each other, it is not a perfect match, but it's kind of close. And even whenever I was doing my makeup look today, I was thinking back, 
like, yeah, I think I've seen this makeup look before. This feels very similar to a look that I've done before. When I look at these eyeshadow palettes side by side, the biggest difference between them is not the shades, it's the pan size. The Dior eyeshadow pans are so much bigger than these little button shadows. They're cute, and it's not like I've hit pan on them, but dang. These are a lot bigger. I think you get a lot more bang for your buck. Actually, let's see. Two grams, four grams, twice as much product. I think it's maybe a dollar. It's either a dollar more expensive or three dollars less. I can't remember if this holiday palette sold for 65 or if it was 62. I know you get an extra shadow, but it's only one extra shadow. Double the product, wow. Next, I'm unboxing this Rouge Blush 310 Golden Frisson. This is a really beautiful highlighter. It does come with the velvet protector. I had to go back and check the other boxes. I thought maybe something happened and it had already been opened. Very light, it's incredibly soft. When I tried to swatch this powder, it just kind of melted from my fingertips, but you can't really see the swatch. You can see it a little bit more on the skin, but as a highlighter, this is as subtle as it gets. It's probably the most subtle highlighter in my collection, but I kind of like it because it's different from a lot of other highlighters. It's kind of a funny texture. It definitely threw me because when I think of the Dior Nude Luminizers, they are very shimmery. That backstage palette that I just picked up, it's extremely shimmery. It's blinding, a very dramatic highlight. This is the complete opposite of that. I used this highlighter today for both of my makeup looks, so you'll get to see it in action. I have a feeling that I'm going to get the most use out of this product of everything I picked up because I think you could probably mix it with a setting powder and use it to set your concealer, kind of the center points of the face, at least for me and my skin tone. It's really beautiful. So creamy. And the last item I picked up is the blush. This is the Rouge Blush 353 Rose Frisson. This blush is absolutely stunning. I think this is probably one of the few pieces that as soon as I saw photos of the collection, I knew I would be taking this home. I didn't have any doubts about this blush. I love the faint shimmer. It reminds me so much of a shade that came out. I wanna say it was limited edition, but there was a blush. Whenever they redid their blushes, they kind of reformulated, repackaged. They came out with something sort of similar, except the shimmer was more iridescent, but it was beautiful. This reminds me a lot of that. So now that you've seen all of the pieces I picked up, I'm going to demonstrate the first look using the Golden Snow Palette. I already did my face. I filled in my eyebrows. The only thing I have on my eyes right now is a little bronzer in the crease because I do like to start with something matte in the crease every single time. And you don't have any matte shadows in this palette. So with a flat shader brush, I'm gonna pick up this really pretty gold right here in the center and this is going all over the lid. It almost looks translucent on the eyes. It's kind of sheer, but I don't mind because it's a really beautiful color. Now I've picked up a Refer 14 brush. It's a petite fluffy, and I'm going into this deep chocolatey brown shade. This is going in the outer V area. This formula seems to be similar to previous Dior quints I've used. I know they have the new formula. They brought out their brand new palettes. I have yet to try any of them because I knew they were in line. It wasn't limited edition. So I wanted to wait until after the holidays when everything kind of quiets down with launches. So I'm not really sure how to compare this with the new formula. To me, it feels identical to the old formula, which I really liked. I never thought it was bad. The shadows do feel really creamy. I'm getting a little fallout with this deep brown. To me, it's performing the exact same way any previous Dior eyeshadow quint has performed. With a blank fruff, fruffy. With a blank fruff, oh my gosh. <laughs> with a blank fruff, fruffy? Okay, one more time. With a blank fluffy brush, I'm going to blend out the crease.
with a pencil brush, I'm going into this really pretty khaki green right here. And I am going to run that beneath the lower lash line. With a precision brush, I'm dipping into this really pretty pale pearl. And I'm going to use that to highlight the inner corner of the eye. Ooh, that's really pretty. I'm also going to run that in the tear duct. I just wiped off that precision brush. I'm going into this peach shade right here at the top. It's kind of a fleshy peach, shimmery beige. And I'm gonna use that to highlight the brow bone. That way we have dipped into all five shades in the palette. This eye look is done. I went in with liquid eyeliner on top, mascara. So now it's time to finish the face. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of this blush. Ooh. It kicks up a lot, so be careful. It's really soft. You only need to tap very lightly in the pan. Oh yeah, I can see a little sparkle. I love it such a pretty color. This might be one of my new favorite blushes. It's so pretty. This one also feels really soft. All you have to do is very lightly tap and you have a ton of product on the brush. That's very light. So there's not a lot of shimmer. It's pretty. I actually really like it because it's different. I have so many highlighters and while they're all beautiful, they kind of do the same thing. They look the same on the skin. This is totally different. It is such a light, very fine shimmer. You can barely even see it. I think it still has too much shimmer to use as a setting powder. That might be too much glow but it's kind of somewhere between a luminous setting powder and a highlight. It's a hybrid. It's so pretty though. This makes me think of the holidays. The last step is lips, and for this look, I pulled out the Diorific lipstick in the shade 066 Passion. I figured this eye would pair really nicely with more of a red lip. So this is one of last year's shades, but I think last year and this year look pretty similar. Not identical, but you can find something very close to this in the current collection. If you really love this packaging, which I wouldn't blame you, it's so pretty. This look is now complete. We're starting over. I'm using the Black Knight palette this time around. And as you can see from these shades, they're all really dark and smoky with one exception, this deep silver up here in the top corner, but it's shimmery. So it's not really going to do for the crease. So as much as I would love to create a look using this palette and this palette only, I am going to lean on my Natasha Denona Glam palette for a little help. If you don't own this palette, I think you probably still have something else that you could use. It's a cool toned palette, so I didn't want to go in the crease with bronzer or something really warm. Instead, I wanted something really cool to match. So I'm going to go into this shade right here, crease. With a fluffy brush, I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to use this in the crease just to blend. taking this flat shader brush and I'm going into this top shade right here. This is kind of a deep gunmetal, almost black with a little shimmer.
Next, with the Sephora crease brush, I'm picking up the center shade. Sort of a deep burgundy. It almost looked brown in the swatch. Very slowly and carefully, I'm going to use that shadow to blend out the crease. So now using my finger, I'm going to pick up the silver shade and I'm going to tap that right on the center of the eyelid. Now I've picked up a precision brush and I'm going into the very deep navy here at the bottom corner and I'm going to run this beneath the lower lash line. It is a smoky eye but I wanted to start with a precision brush and not a pencil brush because I want to lay the color down first very close to the lash line and then I'm going to go back and smoke it out. I don't want to smoke it out too big because I don't want it to become too raccoon. Picking up a pencil brush, I'm going to start to blend that out. I just wiped off my precision brush and I'm dipping back into this really pretty silver shade. I'm going to pop that right in the center of the lower lash line to mirror what we have on the lid. There is a black eyeliner that comes with the collection. It's a shimmery black. The shimmer is so subtle. It's basically black. I don't think you would really be able to pick it up on the eye, so I decided to skip it since I already own several black eyeliners. Eyes are now done. I added a wing with the black liquid eyeliner, went in with mascara, and for a smoky eye like this, if I were wearing this out for a special occasion, I would most likely include false lashes. I'm not going anywhere today, so I'm just going to skip it, but use your imagination to envision fake lashes. I also highlighted the inner corner of the eye and the brow bone using the glam palette. I wanted to use a shade that was more of a soft flesh tone. You really don't have a highlight in that quad. Quint. I'm going in now with blush. Everything else is done on my face. Picked up too much. It is such a beautiful pink. You have to be so careful. I accidentally picked up too much product. It's really soft and creamy. It's really pigmented. And with an eye look like this, I don't want my cheeks to be really pink because it'll just clash big time. I do want a little color, but not much.
I think the highlight works really nicely with this eye because it, it doesn't look shimmery at all. It looks soft and subtle and I think with a bold eye like this, everything else should be sort of soft and subtle. I just picked up my vlogging camera because I wanted to give you guys a second perspective on the smoky eye. It's very hard to tell what a makeup look looks like based on the viewfinder. I don't have an iPad or a computer screen or anything like that. Maybe one day. I'm not quite that fancy. My setup is very minimal. Based on what I could see, I think it looked okay, but at least now using a separate camera, I'm about to take you close to the window. You'll be able to see what it looks like in different lighting settings. Storming outside. I wanted to show you the makeup in a more natural daylight type of setting instead of the studio lighting. It's miserable outside, but we'll try. We'll see. But hopefully you get a good idea of what this makeup look actually looks like. Unfortunately, what little daylight we had today is gone. I'm about to go walk Jazzy. It's still raining outside, so I am sitting at my vanity. I have lights all around here. It's not really daylight. It's still pretty flattering light, but it's not as harsh as the ring light, so at least you can see what the makeup looks like. I'm gonna see the makeup that I got on my shirt earlier. Yeah, you can't really see the highlight. I still really like it, but it's incredibly soft. Overall, I think Dior did a beautiful job for holiday this year. I cannot wait to get my hands on that nail polish. I was told that the lip maximizers were exclusive to Sephora. I thought they were going to bring out two shimmery lip maximizers, so I still need to look into that. I may pick up those as well. I love these pieces. I'm going to go through each one and just kind of give you my final thoughts. The highlighter is beautiful. It's not as shimmery as the nude luminizers. I think it will add something different to your collection. I don't think it's going to work on all skin tones, so just keep that in mind. The blush is kind of the standout for me because I know this is something that I am going to use constantly. I love this shade. I love the shimmer. This is going in my top drawer. I don't want to stop using this. <laughs> the eyeshadow palettes, I think it's going to be Kind of up to you. This is a case-by-case -case basis because as much as I love Golden Snow, I will probably get use out of it. I own a lot of similar palettes. I'm not sure. I can't tell you if I'm going to grab this, if I'm going to gravitate to this more often than the others. It is really pretty. I really like this gold shade in the middle. So who knows? Maybe I will get a lot of use out of this. I hope I get more use out of this than I did the Chanel Holiday palette from last year. I don't really grab for that palette that much anymore and I think it's just because this year I kind of broke my rule of not purchasing larger eyeshadow palettes. I've picked up quite a few and I just have so many palettes now it's kind of overload and you forget about the smaller palettes because the big ones are right in front of you. I do really like the texture. I love the shades. It's very wearable, versatile, could be your everyday palette, could easily transition well into date night special occasion. And then we have the Smoky Eye palette, Black Knight. Another gorgeous palette. The shadows are creamy. They seem to blend really nicely. I was happy with the way it performed on the eyes. The colors are very rich, very moody, vampy. It's beautiful for evening special occasions can only achieve basically one look with this palette. This is going to be smoky eyes and not much else. It doesn't really matter how you play it, what combination of shades you choose, the eye look is going to be smoky. <laughs> I think as long as you are committed to using this eyeshadow palette, it is worth picking up because the colors are really beautiful. But don't get it just to get it. Don't waste your money on things that you're going to touch a handful of times. There are so many pieces from holiday last year that I don't really pull out anymore. And that completes my collection review. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you guys, so be sure to share your thoughts, 
Did you pick up any pieces from this collection? Are you planning to? Drop me a comment, we'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.